Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here from the Second Swing YouTube channel. We've got a fun video for you today. Uh, my youngest brother, Mark, youngest of four, uh, he's still a high school golfer and he's been playing hand-me-down clubs his entire life and so we figured we'll give him a custom fit set here through a fitting at Second Swing. And uh, we just mic'd up Mark, we mic'd up Thomas and uh, we put it together here. So enjoy the video and subscribe to the channel. So Mark, thanks for coming in for a fitting today. Yeah. What are your goals with the fitting? Um, my goals are just to improve my golf game, get, get some irons that are more fit for my game, and just overall and just improve the golf game and so I can get out there next, next season with the golf team and play it to, to the best of my abilities. Okay, where do you play your golf at? I play golf for Watertown, South Dakota. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for making the trip up yeah, here no to problem. Minnesota. Um, so, uh, have you been fit for these irons? I have not you been have fit not? for these. These okay. were previously my brother's irons. Okay. So. Got it. Yep. So these a little bit just, of a hand-me-down. Yep. Hand-me-downs. Uh, all right. Perfect. So I did take a look at some specs here. So these are the MP54s. Yep. Um, they're from 2013. So I mean, we're talking technology that's about <laughs> nine, eight, nine years old now. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, very, very standard specs. So, 34 degrees aloft on the 7 iron, standing length of 37 inches, swing weight D, D2. Uh, everything is very, very standard. Line goal was 61 and a half. So, I want to give you a chance here to kind of warm up a little bit. Okay. We'll, take, we'll take a look at some numbers with, your, with what we're seeing here and we'll see where we need to make any improvements. Okay. All right. So, when you're hitting um, anywhere between those two tees, okay. just place that ball right between the two tees. <laughs> And then uh, I know you've warmed up a little bit. We'll try and get some numbers here. Let's type in gamer. So this will be our tag, and we'll take a look at some numbers with your club. Okay. All right, you got a pretty nice swing there. Definitely got some speed, too. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 16 years old. 16? I will be 17 in March. So right. I wish I had club speed at 91 miles an hour when I was, six, <laughs> when I was 16. <laughs> that one's hit better than the last one. Yeah. When you're playing outside, do you notice a general trend? Do you miss the ball a certain direction at all? Um, when I miss, I usually miss hard to the left. Hard like, to the left? Uh, okay. Like a snap hook or something like that. Yep. But yeah, I normally don't miss to the right unless it's like a huge shank or something like that. But okay, so bull never really goes to the right. Yeah. Okay. Would a goal for you to be trying to try and straighten that out a little bit? Yeah, I would okay. say. Yep. Like that one right there? That one looked like it started just a little left yep. and going a little left. Yeah, that's yep. what typically happens. Okay. What about height? Do you feel like it will fairly high outside? I, I feel like Normally it's about right. Okay. But when I miss left, it's usually not as high as it should be. Yep. Okay. Sounded solid. It's a bit better. Yep, good swing. Just a tad thin. Yeah. That one's pretty thin. Yeah, we could probably take eliminate that one out of the other data, but let's talk about these these first four shots that you were just hitting. Okay. Um, so first thing I'm looking at in a club fitting is club speed. So you'll notice as we're hitting here, 91.5, 91.4, 92.1, 93.1, 94.0. .1, so as you're swinging more and more, you're definitely getting faster and faster. Yeah. One thing I did look at with regards to your irons is you do have the True Tampa Dynamic Gold since the core golf shafts, um, they're stiff flex and they weigh about 127 grams. Okay. Um, so the good news is with those golf shafts is they're already fairly heavy, but they are stiff flex. So when your club speed is starting getting over 88, 90 miles an hour with seven iron, that's when we have that conversation about an extra stiff golf shaft. Okay. Which is, like I mentioned, it's impressive the fact you're 16, 17, and you already got this much speed. <laughs> but we've got to be able to control that club face. So what we do with our iron fittings is we will test three or four different iron models against each other. And then nice. once we figure out which head we like, then we'll try a couple other different shafts okay. and see how they perform. We'll test the weight and see how they, how they feel. Sounds good. So that's the club speed. That's potential distance. Uh, we notice ball speed, 124.8 on average, which is very good. So we divide 124.8, 
divided by 92, we get this number here, which is smash factor. 136 is very solid for a 7 iron. You're just hitting it pretty, pretty close to the middle of the face, which is, which is awesome. Um, I'm also noticing one thing here is spin. So it used to be, you know, back in the day, it used to be club times it by 1,000 um, would be uh, estimated for, for spin. We'll notice, you know, you're kind of towards the, the mid to higher 6,000. So with regards to this fitting, is your goal to try and pick up distance or are you very happy with your distance you're hitting the ball? Um, I feel like I do have an excessive amount of spin on my, on my balls. So yep. I think I could get more distance out of my, out of my swing but I'll just be figuring out how to lower my spin on the ball and stuff, so. Yep. Yeah, I mean, 6,500 average with regards to spin rate, and we'll notice your dynamic loft here, 23.6. You are compressing the ball really well, um, but there's still a decent amount of spin. So yeah. what we notice here is your carry to total distance here is only separated by not even six yards. Okay. So you definitely hit the ball fairly high with spin and have a lot of stopping power. We notice here landing angle 51.3. Um, that's quite a steep landing angle. So we do have definitely have some spin. Um, so I have a couple of t you know secrets up my sleeve there to try and reduce okay. that spin rate if, if we can. But you're in a good ballpark. I'm I'm quite okay with that mu that much spin. I just don't want it to be any more. Okay, that's, that's for sure. If we if we happen to drop it say to 6,000, I still want to make sure you have stopping power. That's the most important okay. thing. And with the speed that you generate, you got plenty of stopping power. However, if we do drop the spin, you're just naturally probably going to pick up a little bit of distance. I don't want you all of a sudden to hit the ball 20 yards further. Yeah. I want to make sure it's still controlled. Uh, look at these other numbers here. Attack angle, negative 3.8. Very, very neutral attack angle. Good numbers there. Noticing the general in-to-out club path with the face angle slightly close to your path. That's what's causing the drawer. Just a couple of those ones, you'll notice this shot, for example, your, your face to path was further to the left, mm -hmm. and that's why it curved further to the left. Um, we can take a look at the, the bull flight that you're hitting on these, these shots. Just kind of a little high drawer for the most part for all of them. You said you never really hit the ball to the, to the right. Never really goes to the right, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to bring up one other number here before we kind of, one other thing before we start, get started here is TrackMan Optimizer. So you'll notice here with your, your speed based on a mid trajectory here, we're seeing attack angle is great. So these blue areas is kind of where we want to fall. So you can see your numbers are all pretty good. We're noticing ball speed's a little bit on the lower side, launch angle is a little bit on the higher side. Okay. So for us to get these numbers a little bit better, what we would do is we want to probably look at a club that maybe has a little bit less loft on it, um, or a club that's designed to get us a little bit more ball speed at a little lower launch angle. Okay. Just to get you a little more optimal. And you see your spin rate, 6,000 to 68 is kind of what we're seeing here is kind of mm -hmm. optimal based on your attack angle at negative 3.8. So your numbers are pretty good. So that's the, that's the good news is the clubs that you've been playing in the past are good. Okay. I always like a challenge. I always like to see, you know, how if we can outperform them or anything like that. But let me know, is there any clubs that you wanted to test today? Anything um, I can get your mind on? I'm, um, I'm liking the Shrikshan. Strix on ZX7? Yes. Yep. And TaylorMade P770. P770s? Yep. Okay. Um, that's about it. That's about it. About it. Just those I mean, two. I'm open to a variety, but. You're open to something else? Yep. So if yep. I threw something else and you're playing Mizuno, would you be interested in seeing another Mizuno oh, iron yeah. at all? Yeah, for sure. Yep. yep. And maybe, maybe I'll stick with those three. Normally, what we do is we we'll test three or four heads against each other. Okay. The same shaft or same weighted golf shaft and then we'll figure out which head we like, and then we'll try a couple of different golf shafts. Okay, sounds good. Um, before I do that, I do want to get a couple of static measurements from you. So if you could hold your hands just down by your side for me. Okay, and then pull your right sleeve up just a little bit for me here. Okay, so what I'm getting here is your wrist to floor measurement. And your wrist to floor here is about 30, 35 and 3 quarters. And I want you to hold your hand out like that for me, just dead straight like that. I'm gonna get a hand size measurement here as well. And your hand size from your wrist crease to the end of the finger is about seven three quarters, and then about three and a quarter. So this is static measurements with regards to what we're seeing based on your, your body type. First thing we're looking at here, as I mentioned, 35 and three quarters. How tall are you? You're like 5'10", right? Yep. Yep, go across right here. Notice we fit into like two degrees upright. Okay. 
I'm a little concerned with going really far upright, especially considering your miss is already to the left. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about giving you a club that's even more upright than the one you're using at 61 and a half, um, because you're already missing the, to the left. Yeah. I don't want you to go any, any further left. Your dynamic lie was 64.7. So you'll notice you're actually three degrees upright at impact, which is going to cause the board to go a little to the left. Okay. Uh, hand size measurement, seven and three quarters, three and a quarter, you kind of fit basically dead in standard. In this chart here, white is standard. Okay. This would be mid-size, this here would be undersized. So we could okay. maybe play around with a little larger grip or a couple of wraps of tape uh, underneath okay. the, the grip to make it a little harder for you to turn those hands over, um, which would be just th something that I want to do. But okay. I'm a little hesitant to go upright, so I'm going to stick with standard lie, and we can definitely play around with that a little bit. Um, you know what? Let's just take a look at your, your numbers real quick. You want to grab your 7 iron for me real yep. quick? What I'm doing here is I'm going to just get you to hit a shot, and I want to see how the club, how this line on the club is pointing for a lie angle. And I really care more about kind of where the ball goes than, than this. Okay. Hold that for a second. And I'm just going to draw a line on this ball. We also have um, these Callaway golf balls that have grooves right through the middle of them, but they eventually they, they, they break. So that's why I'm just drawing a line. Okay, so I want you to hit a shot for me here. Okay. Okay, so that line's dead straight up and down. All right, so that one was a little, that little little pull that yeah. we were kind of talking about. Yeah, I pulled that one. So notice what happens when uh, the spin, when you have a, when you have tape on the face, look at that spin rate, 2,500. So this is important why you always got to clean your grooves, especially with wedges and everything yeah. like that. So ball went really far, but that's what we're looking at here. However, you'll notice how it's saying adjust upright two degrees. So it's saying matching your static measurement, but look where you hit that ball. Way to the left. Way now, left, if yeah. I was going to go upright from here, so even further upright, this club's going to be pointing further this direction. Yeah. So that's why I'm a little hesitant. Even though you statically fit into more upright, if your club path's into out four degrees and your face angle is five degrees, it's always kind of going to go to to the left. To the left. Okay. So nice thing is with the clubs you're going to fit into is we can always bend the line go if we need to later. But I definitely don't want to go any more upright because I don't want you to hit it further okay. left. Yeah. So, and then we'll also notice here you're catching a little bit on the heel. So that also might be a length of the club issue as well. So I'd be curious to see what happens if we play around with, with, uh, with, with a lie and go and implement like that and length as well. But you're okay. catching it just a little on the heel. Okay. Okay, so let me go grab uh, a couple of different of those irons that we talked about. P770. Yeah. Um, and then it was, an, I said I'd throw a Mizuno in and run the other one, Strix on ZX7. Yep. Grab those and we'll test them with okay. the same golf shaft. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Look at those three. I'm going to do the exact same shaft here while we're testing these. And go, we'll go Project X 6.5. You definitely have some speed. Put these over here for now. All right. The Taylor May? This is Taylor May yeah. first, yep. Yeah, so when we're doing this, uh, goal is to make, take out any bias. Okay. So we're just doing a head test with the exact same okay. golf shaft. So we hit five or six shots with each one, and then we'll take a look at the numbers. Yeah, there's a little bit more ball speed there. A little bit less spin as well. It felt good, but just I still have that little... Still got that little drawer. Yeah. Now, that little drawer is going to be a little bit to do with your club path and your face angle yeah. relationship. That sounded really good. Same it ball did. speed number again. Almost the exact same spin. It's good. Yep, 
a little bit more of a miss, but a uh, pretty good miss, right? <laughs> yeah, they've all felt pretty good. Yeah. That one's probably the outlier. Looks yep. like you got that a little heavy. Yeah, that was pretty heavy. Yep. Okay, so we can probably eliminate that last one. Let's just talk about the differences. Four shots versus four shots. So first off, you can see that the ball is definitely going a little bit further. Yeah. Um, we'll notice club speed is just a little bit faster, but what's really you're gaining is you're gaining more ball speed with regards to your your smash factor number here. So 138 versus 136. Uh, we'll also notice spin rate. Spin rate has dropped by about 700 RPMs. Wow. Um, so that's, and also the plus or minus number, the consistency number, consistency number was better as well. Okay. So that stands out to me there too. Now you'll see, you know, seven yards with, with regards to carry and total distance versus, I think that's like five to six yards essentially with regards. So you got a you know, little bit less stop and power, but you've got plenty because you will take a look here, you can see landing angle 50.6 versus 51.3. Yeah, okay. So really, really good. Actually, it was flying just a little higher because you were hitting it even more solid overall. But yeah, your numbers are really consistent. Attack angle, club path numbers, very, very consistent every single time. Okay. Um, do you have a handicap index? Handicap? Yeah. Um, about 10. About 10? Really? <laughs> what do you say? All right. Yeah. Well, your bull striking numbers, I would say, is a little bit better than, say, a, a 10 handicap. So we might have to take a look at your short game, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> so let's test a couple other clubs. We can see definitely some gains, um, definitely dropping the spin rate. The biggest difference is P770 loft on that golf club is one degree stronger. So okay. that's why the spin rate's less, that's why you're getting a little bit more ball speed. Um, pretty good start though. Okay. Okay, let's switch over here to Strixon ZX7. Look pretty good. Another pretty good one there. Yeah. That one felt pretty good. Yep, really good. Touch thin. Yep. I mean, get away with it though. I think it's about the same shot as the one before. Yep. Nice. All right, so we take a look at the numbers here. What's interesting here with the ZX-7, you're not quite swinging as fast as you were with the P770. Okay. So I think maybe we've hit our peak, essentially. I think your club speed's around about 92 to 93 miles okay. an hour. Uh, you'll notice here, ball speed, just a little bit lower than the P770. Spin rate was also just a little bit higher. So it's not gonna go quite as far as the P770. Okay. I find that interesting because I know the loft of the CX-7 actually is a little stronger. It's one degree stronger than the P770. But the numbers were, were excellent. You'll notice landing angle just a little bit shallower compared to yours. About the same as those, as those two. Height about the same. Really good numbers overall. The one thing I found interesting is the direction the ball was going. So we bring up here, you can see the dispersion. Not hitting it quite as far left with this golf club. Um, so. One thing I will tell you is the Strixon lie angle is flatter than a tailor-made standard lie angle. So these are both standard lie angles okay. with regards to the heads, um, but Strixon is a little bit flatter. So actually, let's go back to, you know what, let's pick up this, this impact spot. So if we look here on the table, we'll notice ZX7 dynamic lie 64 degrees. P770 dynamic lie 65.1. Yours was also 64.7. The ZX7 lie angle was just a little bit better. So I, you're okay. closer to what is, is really good with regards to a lie, presented lie angle at impact. Okay. So now with TaylorMade, we can always go a degree flatter. We can always order a degree flatter if, if we need to, if, if we like the TaylorMade head. One thing I just noticed there with ZX7 is you see how the direction changed because yeah. the lie angle was just a touch flatter overall. But pretty good. Okay, let's throw one more club here in the mix. This is the Mizuno 
Uh, this is the Mizuno Pro 223. That was a little chunky, right? Yeah, a little, yep. yeah. Really forgiving, though. I don't know if I was pretty good, but. Yep. That was good. different. Yep. A little miss it. Yeah. Yep. And let's go one more. Even five with each each club. Okay. Okay. So let's keep up like we did with the first two. Keep up your best four with each one. So let's just eliminate out any of the uh, of the misses. So we'll probably let's go. For example, this one here would be out with the ZX7. We've got four with the P770. Um, let's see what we've got going on here. Maybe. No, that's P770. Um, you didn't hit this one as well as we can, as we can see. Yeah. So I'm trying to find one to eliminate. Um, probably the one, this one here, no spin rate was significantly less. So we'll take that one out. OK, so now let's look at the numbers. Let's see if anything stands out to us. Um, so club speed, yeah, you're 92 to 94. Definitely extra stiff with regards to the, the flex. Um, ball speed, so this is where we kind of focus on ball speed is where you're going to get a little more distance. It also tells us how well you're hitting that particular club. So ball speed and efficiency, the best two were P770 and ZX7. Good choice. <laughs> it's like you knew what you wanted yeah. to come in and hit, right? <laughs> Yeah, what's interesting here is the launch angle was also the same, just slightly lower launch. Okay. And also the spin rate was just a little bit less. All of them, the spin rate was less than yours, just because the loft is a touch stronger. Okay. I wouldn't want to go any stronger than this. I think these numbers are really, really good. We start going any stronger, and then uh, you'll hit the ball too far. Now, there is a such thing as hitting the ball too far, because then it makes it a little harder to gap the rest of the clubs. Yeah. Um, but your numbers were really good. Um, I want to just dissect and take a look at the consistency numbers. That's probably being a better player is a way to kind of take a look here. So I'm looking at these plus or minus numbers. So you'll notice clearly that these two, plus or minus 134, plus or minus 100, very consistent overall. Plus or minus 1.9, plus or minus 2.3 on the carry distance with them. So very, very consistent numbers overall. And then we got this dispersion screen. One thing that definitely stands out if you look at the best four is ZX7, a little bit tighter together there, of yep. the best four. Now to ask you, which circle you like better up there? Which one makes the most sense? Uh, blue. Blue, it's the smallest, right? Yep. Yeah. So I know it's a small sample size. You know, in an iron fitting, we only have an hour to get you dialed in. And you know, we're just trying to find, figure out the process of elimination to figure out which head we like. Mm -hmm. uh, Give me some feedback. Let me know out of those clubs which one you feel like you like the best, looking down at and, and feel. Out of these clubs, I like the trick shots. Yep. Um, they all around just felt way way better to hit. I also like the P770 too, but I feel like the trick shot, it just felt more accurate with every hit, and it just felt better every time. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would say let's let's continue on the route since you like the Strix on and the numbers were the best with the Strix okay. on with regards to consistency. So let's uh, let's try a couple of different golf shafts, and then let's play around with lying go up to finish up with okay. with here as well. So I did bring a couple of different golf shafts over with me here. So the one that you were just hitting there, that's the Project X uh, six point five. So that one actually weighs a hundred and. Um, 125 grams. Okay. It is extra stiff, but I want to try a couple others and see how the others compare. I'm not going to tell you what they are, unless you know, okay. you know what, they, what they are. Is I want to make this as unbiased as we can. Just give me some feedback on how the shaft feels and okay. if you notice anything, anything different. Okay.
Yep, that was really nice. That sounded really good. Yeah, it felt really good. There. Yeah. What I find funny right now is they're going the exact same spot. Yep. So <laughs> this is where I'll, I'll say a lot of the times it's more the club head than the, than the golf shaft. It's going to be always player dependent, but yeah, numbers were really good and dispersion really good. It's so about far. the same as the blue circle yeah, too. Yeah, same as the blue circle. Yeah. That one I always say that, and every time the dispersion gets ruined. But even still, like that one was a miss hit. But you notice how you got away with that. We know you got that chunky. You yeah. see your ball speed dropped. But you got just a touch more forgiveness out of that. So your distance, 185.5, it was almost the exact same. You see 185.5, 184.1, 87.5. So even though you, you lost 10 miles an hour ball speed, yeah, I hit that really did the fat. exact same thing. Yeah. yeah so that's pretty good. Full speed there. Yep. Yeah, that's solid. You notice anything different with this, with this golf shaft at all? I'm not really noticing anything really too different. Yep. I mean, feels good just like the last one. It's good. Yeah, good, good numbers. You can take out that one that you kind of did miss it a little mm -hmm. bit. And we can look at your, your averages and see 181.7 carry going 188.8, really good. 179.2 going 186. Um, same club speed, 92.1, 92.2. Uh, just a touch more ball speed. It's a little bit because your face angle was just a little bit more closed coming through. Okay. You'll notice here, close 0.2 degrees mm -hmm. versus open 0.9. But numbers, 59.35, 59.37. Wow. <laughs> yeah, look at that spin consistency right there. Yeah, so I like, I like that a lot. And even just looking at like the, um, the optimizer numbers here, you can see here where and fitting right up in the middle of her, everything here, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing is to spin just a little on the lower side. However, you'll notice you still have plenty of stopping power there. So yeah. it's not a concern at all with regards to, to the spin. Yeah, and especially considering you, you said, you told me that you feel like you spin the ball a lot. Yeah. So outside you may spin a little more a lot, especially if you get some wind. I know in South Dakota, you get some wind out there. A lot of wind in South Dakota. Yeah, yeah. a lot of wind in South Dakota. So a little bit less spin is not gonna hurt you. From okay. That. Okay, so that golf shaft was just a little bit heavier. That's all. Heavier? Yeah, a okay. little bit heavier. Yeah. Let's try one other, one other golf shaft. But as you can see, the numbers really weren't really affected too much. And also, I guess the difference is stepped golf shaft versus stepless. So what I mean by that is the Project X golf shaft. Notice there's no steps on it at all. Yeah. Versus the X100, it's got steps kind of all the way, all the way down it essentially. Oh, so okay. See. So it's a little bit more of a, a feel thing. Um, let's test one other shaft here. That was a miss hit. <laughs> All right. So five swings there. Notice there's one you left the face open on. Yep. That was the mess. That would be the, the outlier. So let's remove that, keeping up your best four. So yeah, look at those circles. <laughs> They're almost on top of each other, right? Mm -hmm. So for the sake of making this a little bit easier, let's take the tailor made out. Let's take your gamer away. And let's take the Mizuno Pro 220 
three away. And now let's just look and see if there's anything that stands out to us at all. We're going to rank these from top to bottom. And really, it's going to be hard to separate. You yeah. notice the spin rate numbers, you know, they're almost identical, right? Yeah. So club speed numbers, almost kind of the same. Ball speed numbers, pretty, pretty similar. We'll notice X100 a little bit faster. That's because your face angle was just a little bit more close there to your, to your path. Okay. Um, yeah, really interesting. Really, for what we're seeing here is more the club head than the golf shaft. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, with that being said, is there one that in, the, in your mind felt better in your hands? Um, the first shaft. The first shaft? the best to me, yeah. Yep. What, I mean, what? they all felt pretty similar, but the first one, I think all around was the best one. Yeah, so the difference between that last shaft you hit and the first one is the LZ stands for loading zone. So it's Project X, it's stepless, it just has a little softer section in it. Okay. Well, the Project X is just a very, very stable golf shaft overall. I'll revert back to the dispersion pattern here. Obviously, it was pretty tight overall. Um, we're definitely seeing, yeah, still just a little bit left of center. So I do want to just play around with line goal a little bit just okay. to see what happens. Um, if we look at you know, impact, lie angle, we were 64.9, 63.9, 65.5. And you can see your hit location, you know, it's really hovering just a little bit towards the heel side, yeah. if, if anything. So I want to see what happens if we go just a little bit flatter to try and help get rid of that little bit of a drawer. Okay. So let's, let's try that. So I'm going to put the Project X with a two degree flat Strix on ZX7 head in. Really good there. interesting there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. So with the exception of the first swing, it might have been a little bit of adjustment. So that was 32. Let's take a look at these last four and see what happens in the direction. So we'll notice it kind of pushed you over a little bit, yeah. a little bit straighter. Um, total distance carry distance also kind of went a little bit further. So you were getting just a little bit more ball speed, but the lie angle was a little bit better for mm -hmm. you the way that you're, the way that you deliver the golf club. It just means that we need to have something a little bit, a little bit flatter to help get rid of the ball curving. Okay. So let's look here and see average curve on the ball. So 19 feet of average curve with two degrees flat, 39, 34, 33 with the standard. So we reduced your curve by having a little flatter yeah. line angle. Yeah. Does that does that feel different at address to you that club when it's flatter at all, or do you, do you even do you even notice it? I didn't I didn't notice a huge difference, but I guess I am pushing it more to the right, which is better. So yeah. Well, what what I find interesting here is we look at your face angle. Notice how the face angle actually was a little more open yeah. with the flatter line angle. Um, your club path. Pretty similar, right? You know, yeah. talking club path. So your face to path had the least amount of negative or least amount to the left. So you're able to hit the ball a little straighter. Mm -hmm. You're still hitting a little drawer. It just, yeah. well, you just, you said your big miss is that big pull left. Yeah. You're just not going to hit that big pull left from this lie angle okay. here too. So I like, you know, I definitely like a flatter lie angle for you from what I'm seeing now with your swing. Okay. Um, for, you, for you for sure to work on swing technique is keep working on that club face and that club path and trying to match them up. Um, if, for example, that you start noticing you're missing the ball a little more to the right when you're working on that, nice thing with these being forged is we can always bend them back to a little bit more closer to what we're seeing okay. as your static measurements. But from what I'm seeing today, a little flatter line angle is going to get the ball to fly a little bit straighter. A straighter okay. And this line here is considered dead straight essentially. Okay. So, and it's kind of interesting, you're actually hitting it just a little bit further as well. Yeah, it was really, really good numbers. Um, yeah, I, I would go two degrees flat, Project X, L, 
Project X 6.5, ZX7. Um, you have enough speed for sure four iron with the set. What, what is your gapping like with the rest of your bag? Do, what do, you, do you have to play a hybrid? Do you play a drive and iron, utility, yeah, or something like that? I play a hybrid and then three wood. OK, what's the hybrid? Hybrid is a 19 degree. 19 degree, so yeah. that's considered like a three hybrid. So that'll yeah. gap pretty well with the bag. Mm -hmm. um, what about at the other end of the spectrum? What are your wedges right now? Wedges, I have a 50 degree, 54, and 58. OK, perfect. So I know ZX7 wedge, the pitching wedge with the set is 46 degrees. Okay. So from there, you've got four degree gapping. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll say, you know, what is the condition of your wedges? Are they, are they new? Are They're they in good, good shape? I just got them new last year. Just so. got them new last year? Okay. Well, we might not need to uh, upgrade those today. But just know that wedges, they do, they do wear a little bit over, over, over yeah. time if you're playing a lot of golf. But the, the gaps are perfect with this set. I can bring it up here for us just to see. So we can see how the pitching wedge is 46 with, yep. this, with this set. So you, then you go 4-4-4, four, 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 which is perfect. The only thing, lion goal is going to be 2 degrees flat. So lion goal in your 7-iron seven, seven is going to be like 60. 8-iron um, is going to be 60 and a half. 9-iron is going to be um, 61. Pitching wedge is going to be 61 and a half. Okay. So we might need to check to see what the line go is on your wedges. So we can always tweak those real quickly. I can bend them real quickly for you there too. Just to make sure that they flow well with the set because I don't okay. want your okay. your wedges lying would be upright when your rest of your irons are really um, flat essentially. So. So Mark ended up with Shrixon ZX7 irons, two degrees flat, um, with Golf Pride CP2 wrap uh, grips with one extra wrap of tape. Uh, underneath and then Project X LZ 6.5 shafts. So uh, we're actually a few weeks after the fitting and he got his irons in nine days. So a uh, good sign for those custom order times. But um, thank you all for watching. It was a great time. I, you probably saw my brothers and my dad in the background as well. So um, we had a good time. Thomas had a great fit and uh, Mark's very excited about his clubs. Uh, reminder for golfers out there, schedule your fitting at Second Swing. We'll take care of you. We'll get you set up for 2022 and also subscribe to the YouTube channel.